Art likes to get bathed in blood when it's 18 below. Here's your look at the Trick or Treat Studios, Damien Leon's Terrifier Bloodbath Art the Clown. Trick or Treat Studios is proud to present the officially licensed Terrifier Art the Clown Bloodbath 5 inch action figure. Bloodbath Art the Clown features color change blood splatter action. Simply spray ice water or place the figure in your freezer to see Art get drenched in the blood of his victims. The figure comes complete with a trash bag of terror that holds three weapons of choice a pistol, a knife, and his trusty hacksaw. Get your official Terrifier Art the Clown Bloodbath 5 inch figure now. Just before we start coloring this crazy in crimson, I'd like to first thank the folks over at Trick or Treat Studios that did provide the sample of the Terrify Art the Clown Blood Bloodbath 5-inch action figure that we have a look at this review. As of the time of shooting this video, this guy's a pre-order over on their website with a ship date release of December 1st, 2023 and going for $19.99 can't believe the price if you guys are interested and would like to get on board picking up bloodbath art the clown for yourself click the link by by all means click the link down below in the video description in the meantime though let's grab the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands with hat in check art the clown stands about five and a half inches in height or the figure is going to be about 13 and a half centimeters tall Feeling that the figure scales well with the other earlier looked at House of a Thousand Corpses retro figures also produced by Trick or Treat Studios. I did want to bring in a couple right now for comparisons. He's clearly, in this case, smaller than the Professor, but he's a little bit more closer in size, I would say, to Dr. Satan, and he's even closer in size, I would say, to Baby Firefly. Speaking of the Fireflies, one question I'm sure you guys will probably be asking if I get Baby Firefly to actually stand. I'm sure one thing you guys probably will be asking is, you know, you did look at a collector's case that stored away all the figures for the House of a Thousand Corpses corpses line could in theory could in theory art the clown also fit in there as well and because there was also compartment spaces that weren't currently being used by firefly family members the answer is yes you can also store away art the clown in there if you wanted to Speaking of storing, Art the Clown not only includes three accessories they can wield in either one of his hands, but he also includes the storage space to store those away if he wanted to. Well, look at that first. He comes in clue with a very large plastic bag. The bag, as you may be able to see, does have a little hinge on the back of this, but because you can open this up, I find sometimes it's a little harder to get it open if you just pinch the bottom of it and then get your finger sort of wedged in the crack. It's easy to open up the bag that way. And while you may not be able to see stored away body parts for right now, one little Easter egg they've included on the bag, if we just close up the bag for right now, you can see that stretched across the plastic is a screaming face. Judging by the size of this head, and then judging by the bag it sits inside, I can't imagine that the rest of the body is in here. Or if it is, it's not intact. I think that's a nice little touch that they included. We'll leave this open for right now as we have a look at the accessories and then we'll pop them into the bag and then we'll drape them over his shoulder. The figure comes included with one of the first accessories, a pistol. And the pistol, the knife, and the hacksaw, oh my, are all molded in silver plastic. It doesn't look to be the case that they've added any bit of paint to it, which is fine because these are supposed to look like retro toys. He does have a means to really store or hold accessories with either one of his hands. Even though this hand looks like it's actually more designed to be pulling eyes out of someone's socket, he could technically, in theory, still be able to wield the, the, uh, the gun on this side. The trigger firing finger still works, although it sort of awkwardly holds in his hand instead on this side. If you though wanted to use it on this side, I noticed that the plastic for the hands is a fairly dense plastic, so you may want to, we're going to be talking about cold temperatured waters in a moment, but if you did want to use a hot temperature water, simply just soften the plastic on the hand just a little bit greater, so you'd be able to widen the grip and you'd be able to hold the pistol a little bit better than what he is right now. I honestly, when it comes to displaying the figure, would probably prefer to put the pistol on this side, freeing up then available real estate space then on this side for then the next accessories. Like for example, the figure comes in glue with a knife. The knife for right now seems pretty clean, but give it a little bit of time. Art can get pretty creative when it comes to dispensing his victims. The blade as well as the handle all been molded here in silver plastic. And again, you can put that into his hand. Just simply wedge that down between the fingers and the thumb. Before it did look like a trigger finger. Now it actually looks like he's just resting against the blade. By far my favorite of the accessories though, the figure comes in clue with a hacksaw. The hacksaw still looks clean, but give it just a little bit of time. I like the look of the hacksaw quite a lot. And by far my favorite of the accessories, I will be displaying this with the figure. But let's just say for the sake of this, if you wanted to store away all the other things that he came included with, the gun, the knife, and the hacksaw, simply just take the bag and there's enough space really in there 
Although the hacksaw being the longest of the three, you will have to kind of just make sure enough of it's in there to be able to properly close the bag. Then put in the knife, then put in the pistol, and while still keeping the bag open up here, we can then close up shop for the night, make sure it snaps shut. And then I like to do this. You can also then use those fingers. Just take the bag and wedge them in between his finger and his thumb. So it looks like Art the Clown is carrying around the bag. Now, obviously, if you wanted to have them displayed, say, with the hacksaw, I'm going to do it this at least. Display the hacksaw on this side. All the other accessories nicely are stored away here along with the screaming face with whatever left of the body inside the bag. Let's just put that away for right now. We'll look at the details, of course, for Art the Clown before we start coloring this guy in red. To, in order to color him red, by the way, a couple of things that you can do, you can either just simply put this guy into a freezer for a couple of minutes. You can also use cold water and spritz that across the surface of the plastic. I might end up just putting this guy in the freezer in a moment, but first for right now, I did want to show you guys the details for the face. The face looks really good. Sinister in nature. He does have, again, like always the case, Art the Clown has this big, sinister, devilish smile. Quite dark in the areas of the lips, although not as dark, to be fair, in the gums on the top and the bottom. I think they probably could have darkened this a little bit better. But I think, honestly, the reason reason why they probably went with pink instead of sort of that discolored teeth color that he has in the movie is just so it looks separate then from the rest of the lips. He's got the panel lining, obviously, there around his eyes. The eyebrows handled very nicely also as well. And he's got that little dot on the end of his nose. He does, of course, wearing a headpiece, a, a cow piece. So you can see, even though it's still pretty much the same color of plastic, you can really very still easily see how that's been stretched across the back of his head. He does have the tiny little hat. It's not removable. He's got the frilled collar, of course, the top of his head. And while looking at this, it looks as if they probably would have used this sort of pearlesque white plastic and then simply painted the parts in black that are halved on one side, gone back and in there and painted that likely in black. Because I can't think that they probably would have painted the white over top of the black. The, the white is so clean. I'm guessing that that's the original molded color. The paint is, for what it is, very handled well. I mean, again, like the darker section on the black, if this is a section that is painted there's very much a sharp line down the, the middle of him. So it doesn't look like there's really any messy paint at all. There's a few, there's one little area down below here, but so small, in fact, you probably would never be able to see it. He's got the big, long, big, large clown shoes on the bottom. He doesn't have surprisingly peggles on the undersides of his feet, but Art the Clown actually stands fine. If you have him hunched forward, like he tends to be the case in the movies, he stands fine. If, though, you lean him back a little bit, that's, be that's where he starts to become a little bit more off-keltered. For the articulation on Art the Clown, he is going to only have five points of articulation. He's going to have it in the head. He's going to have it in the shoulders. He's going to have it in the legs. For the head, though, the head does rotate all the way around. It doesn't look to be a case where it's a ball joint, so they likely have just pegged it in place. The arm, how on the, on the other hand, does rotate all the way around. It's still the same the case on this side, too. And then for the legs, simply just a case of swiveling forward, and you can also swivel them back. If you had yourself like a little display stand, you could also put them in a running pose. But a nice looking Art the Clown. So again, like what you can do in order to get the blood effect is again, like you can spray this guy with cold water. You can also put him in the freezer, which is likely what I'm going to end up doing. I'm just going to pop him in the freezer for a couple of minutes. I'll show you guys what the blood bath effect looks like on this figure once he gets a little bit colder. After having this chiller chilled in my freezer for approximately 10 minutes, this is what we end up getting. I don't think prolonged periods in freezers will actually make the intensity of the stain darker, but one thing it will do is it will prolong the, the length of time that the plastic still stays cold, because already holding this guy in hand, just my body temperature alone is heating up the plastic and the stains go away. Precautionary measures in place, I've got myself a little bag of ice. Now, again, you could use just spritzed water, but keeping a bag of ice on the ready like this, easily you can see how just resting this against the plastic will bring back in the stain, and doing it now against the shoulder where I was resting my thumb, you can see that it brings the stain back that way as well. It's really nice the way they've done this and executed this. Original 80s toys would have had the gimmick of adding water to something. Usually I would have thought of die cast cars as something that would have color change effects. But I like the way that they've stained the front of his face. He's got like the lighter color of the pink splatter across the clown collar. Down now the shoulder, the front of his chest, and down below on the bottom of his leg. But already just again holding this in hand, either again having it longer in freezer would probably have prolonged that plastic still staying cold, or again, if you just happen to have yourself like ice on the side here, you can see how easy it is just for that stain to start to surface again on the plastic. It's only on the front of the figure's body, though. 
So the moment you spin this around to the back, you'll notice right away he doesn't have it anywhere on the back of his suit. He doesn't have it on the back of his head. Mainly, though, the gimmick is centralized here on the front of the figure's body. And it does look quite good here for as long as you actually can keep this guy cold. Again, just by taking my thumb and pressing it against the front of his face, you can already see just that little bit of temperature change is more than enough to have the blood disappear on you. If you guys are looking, obviously, to have this guy with longer periods of time where the blood is like sticking out and peering, pe peeking out of his body like this, it's best advised, again, to probably keep this guy in a freezer for a longer period of time than maybe 10 minutes, maybe even do it an hour, so that even if you are holding this guy in hand, your temperature is not going to be enough to change it that greatly where it's going to start to disappear on you. Again, like you can easily just get yourself something cold of a temperature and just rest against the plastic. You can already see how, again, that's starting to, sh to shine. It's a nice looking figure. And one thing I would certainly like to see them do as well is, I mean, obviously this one he weighs heavily on the fact that there's a working gimmick. Uh, temperature will be the big thing that either will change it to red or revert it back to its plastic color. I would love to also see this being used, of course, still of this same mold. Them not release a blood variant of it. But obviously by saying that, they would have to have done away with the gimmick altogether. But I just really like the look of this figure anyways, that I would love to see them release just a, a bloodied version of him that doesn't necessarily need to have the gimmick. Now again, when it comes back to the bag, you can either have the bag draped across the shoulders, but they've also designed, again, obviously the bag. So if you just want to put it into his hand, for example, he can kind of just carry around the bag that way too. It's a nice looking figure though. And I'm glad to see that Art the Clown is getting a lot more merchandise now. Obviously, we're now into Terrifier 2. There's already plans and talks of doing Terrifier 3, which is like the second one is going to get a theatrical release. So, yeah, if you are a big fan of Art the Clown and loving the Terrifier films, this is a great figure to be picking up. Not only a throwback, not only a reference, I should say, to the Terrifier movies, but a throwback to the older days, the simpler days, the funner days. Is funner even a word? The cooler days of 80s toys. While this guy is simple, obviously... In the construction of him, he's only got five points of articulation in the head, the shoulders, and the legs. The fact that they incorporate the gimmick, I think, is a nice touch to a very terrifying character. As Bloodbath Art the Clown rotates here on the turntable, you'll see probably with the hotter temperatures of the studio lights surrounding this guy that the stain that he has on his body is all but dissipated except for his face, and it may still progressively start to disappear as we have a look at the figure and as we certainly have wrapped up things. Wrapping up the review, by the way, I've got this guy displayed with one bag in hand with the remaining of his accessories that you can't currently see, that being the butcher knife and the pistol. The hacksaw, by far my favorite of the three things, I've got him displayed with that in his other hand, and instead of starting the reviews where I had the bag draped over his shoulder, the more natural way of displaying it is by having it, I've got it right now, where he's just sort of gripping the end of the bag enough that you can still see that there's something else quite sinister in that bag but besides just a knife and a gun it's a nice looking figure he's limited when it comes to posability but that goes with the territory of all these retro figures we've now just recently looked at well, the house of a thousand corpses figures if you didn't get the chance to have a look at that feel free to go back and check out those reviews but the thing i like also about this line of retro figures is the price in which trick-or-treat studios set these at i mean art the clown is twenty dollars 19.99 and I, uh, I, I think you can't beat that, considering you get a figure as good as you do in this case. You get the accessories that you do with uh, with him as well, and the fact that the figure does have a gimmick. Although, to be fair, the, the gimmick isn't lasting, as even I can see right now, it's starting to disappear on his face. But at least for right now, we can appreciate that he's soaked in blood. Big thank you once again to the folks over at Trick or Treat Studios that did provide this sample of the Terrifier Art the Clown Bloodbath 5-inch action figure who's not as bloodbath, blath, bath, blood bathed. That was a bit of a tongue twister, as maybe we had looked at earlier in this review. But what do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. Could you see yourselves picking this one up and add it to your collection? And have you already picked up the House of a Thousand Corpses retro figures, all of which are still as of right now, I believe, are still available over on their website. If you guys are interested and you'd like to get your hands on the House of a Thousand Corpses figures because you haven't done yet, or you'd like to get on a pre-order for Terrify Art the Clown, I'll provide the links down below in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video, why not hit with a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you certainly do want to stick around for more, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're also turning on the bell notification. And of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.